Today we're going to see uh, how we use Working Model 2D to create some mechanisms. Uh, mechanisms are very important in, in vehicle design and the analysis of vehicle reconstruction because it gives us the ability to model things, to analyze a failure of some vehicles. Not just the collisions, but think about um, the many accidents deal with the failure of the suspension system. And so how are we going to analyze that is a very important aspect. And to be able to do that, we need to know how to do mechanism. We need to be able to uh, design some things that will, will actually um, be representative of what, what vehicles do and what systems in vehicles do. So let's uh, let's get started with this. And what I I would suggest is um, we create a um, create a simple mechanism like a four bar linkage first. Yeah, you created one bar, and maybe we create another bar in here. Remember, in working model today, these are not just drawings; they are they are actually uh, they are rigid bodies. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we we do another one in working model today. If you do a control D, it duplicates the object. And you could just maybe change the the length. Okay. So here's what I propose we do. Let's just um, by using the ability to position objects and position them in angles that we want to create the the mechanism that we want. Um, Um, here we have a situation where we can say this is the crank. So if you go over here and we'll, we'll position this, let's say, at the minus 30 degrees, we'll see what happens. Oh, bad boy, <laughs> because that's not what I meant to do. Um, we need this one here, and this is in radians, so let's do, huh? Thank you. Minus a point, what is? Point five two. Two five. Five two four. Five two four. No. Point five two four. Yeah. See here, there's the. Yeah, I think this would be enough. Um, we could just um, just to to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, in here, if you go to the world, and um, there is the um, the units in here, we would we need to say number and units. And you expand this. We could we could work in degrees. You know, in here you or the rotation is in radians, and you could work in degrees. See, mm -hmm. so just to make our life easier. Uh, okay, here. So this one is. Uh, minus 35 degrees is what I have <coughs> just put in here. Um, let's go back so you can see. Zero does this. If you put it at 10 degrees, it's going to be about the x-axis, right? If you put it at minus 10 degrees, it's going to do this. See? So you could position this or 
if you put a hundred and twenty, it's like putting minus thirty, right? So you think about this, you know, if you put a hundred and twenty, you're gonna get this. And um, if you put minus thirty, is is going to be from here. So I it's always reference to the x axis. So um, I think 120 is what we want for the orientation of the four-bar linkage. Right here, you can do the uh, pin joint, but if you put the motor in here and you make this up, the motor does the pin joint also. So you see those guys fall, but this one is going to turn, see? Have a little motor in there. So we're gonna reset. Uh, we don't like the way this is going, so instead of, uh, of 57 de degrees per second, this is gonna do minus. So if this is the case, you see it will turn like this. Yeah, so that's all right. Um, we could connect this one over here. We're also with one of those joints in here, like this. So you see now this is becomes like this. And then we could um, put a, another one in here to Maybe also about 120. Important thing is that we would have a mechanism that actually works. See here, we could put the um, pin joint in here, and then the other one we could do it also. Uh, let's see if it works. Hmm? It does. Wonderful. This is not necessarily the case all the time because you may have a um, situation where the uh, links are not compatible with the geometry. Sometimes the, the, the sense may also give you a different result. In this case, we, we are fortunate that the mechanism <coughs> is working really well and that uh, we were able to to create it without much more trouble. What is important here and is to um, to look at the analysis part of it. Like in here, if I want to measure the uh, <laughs> the forces are available to me and right there I can find out what the force on, on that join is and the computer would allow me to to look at the values in the event or do a plot of them. So if you run you see what happens at every instant of time you get the force x y and then the resultant. But if you um, if you do a measuring here and then you know, define the vector, the velocity and the acceleration. Well, let's do the velocity first. Look what will happen. You see that that blue vector changes direction but the magnitude remains constant because the, the <coughs> motor has no acceleration. But we could, uh, you see, so it's telling us where the, where the velocity, how the velocity is. But if, if, we, if we look at the same point, but now, I go to define the vector acceleration, and I do the same thing. 
Do you see that green vector in there? It's always pointing to the to the center. I think perhaps if we increase the velocity a little bit on the motor, we'll be able to. Let's see. Let's do a hundred in here. Now we can see it a little better because the vectors are, are bigger. You see, you could keep the track you could keep track of the direction of the velocity and the acceleration, but also you could keep um, uh, you know in here the definition of the forces the total force, the resulting force. And look at that. So you you have the ability to calculate the forces on this, but also the velocities and the accelerations. So the what I'm trying to tell you is the kinematics are available to you as well as the dynamics. <laughs> Uh, as well as the kinetics, I should say, because dynamics is the mixture of kinematics and kinetics. So you you are able to do this, but at the top, you you have the value of the of the force in there. That's what we're doing here. Okay. So I think this this shows you how we can create the mechanism to do certain things and how we also measure. We don't have uh, any any difficulties in, in looking at the same thing on what happens on the other, you know, the other connection. Like in here, if you define the velocity, you define the acceleration, and we define the vector total force, you're going to get the same thing, but now on the on the other pin joint. And this is very helpful for failure analysis of parts, but also in, in case of uh, design or trying to find out what loads are the normal operation. Like, for example, this would be very crucial on a suspension system, on a steering mechanism, things like that. Where you will, um, where you wanna find out the forces. So that's how we we design a simple four bar linkage in here. Now we could design a different one, and one that has a slider perhaps. And uh, so let's just do a new and follow the same procedure do something in here i'm going to to again now that we gotten good at this at about 120 degrees from the horizontal oh what did i do because this is in radians you know, it makes a big difference when you uh, when you do that. And of course, it's very easier easier to work in degrees. Six thousand degrees? No, hundred and twenty degrees is what we want. Okay. And what I envision happening is is doing a slider slider mechanism and hopefully this will let's see how hopefully this will work well we'll see so this is going to be my motor in here and I'll put it right here for now we can accept the default value like that all right, for now. 
I am going to create a sliding mechanism in here. This is a, um, this one like this. <laughs> and I am going to build um, a block in here. Let me, I hope I, okay. I hope this is clear. We, we want to create a, first of all, I think we need to create a join between these two. Um, let me see how, how it goes here. And then we need to define the pointing here. And I'm going to define another point over here. If you click on um, with the shift key, this see the two join now. See now this is this is like this. So what I want to do is to is to have like a slider in here, and to be able to do that, we can connect key the slot join. <coughs> in the horizontal direction. Okay, so if we do it here and we put it here. Uh, didn't quite work because no, I don't think this will work. See, in fact, it doesn't. So we need to undo this. <laughs> what? Um, this is a horizontal one. I believe yeah this is what we want to do there we go do you see in here I created an incompatibility um, because the slider slides, but they, it won't turn. But this is how you build those two. So um, this is just an example on, on how we can do it. Let's see what it does when we reverse the, the, the motion. Yeah. You know, it needs to be, the crown needs to be a lot shorter or, or the connected in a different place. Uh, or we'll, we'll have to see what, how we fix this, but uh, we might not be able to at the same time because certain geometries are incompatible. The point is that you can create a slider like this and that is perfectly fine. So, okay, that's how you create mechanisms. So what I would like you to try is to see if, if you can do this one. Hmm? I'm going to be leaving it up here as a model. And um, I would like you to, those of you who are watching this video, um, give it a try and see if you can get it going. And that way we would have achieved how we design mechanisms in working model 2D.